Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. Well this is a video I've been asked to do for so long and the reason I haven't done it yet was because I wanted to do the buyer's guide first. So a couple of videos ago I did the buyer's guide for the 6 series, E63, E64 and F whatever they are and to make sure you're going to get a great one and not a real lemon. So we went through all the things to check on a garage forecourt to make sure it was in lovely condition. This video is different. This is about how to maintain your 6 Series in perfect condition so it looks like it just came out of the showroom and it drives just like it came out of the showroom. And much more importantly than that, that it's still got Oh, 370 horsepower! Oh, blimey! Yep, yeah, it is fun, yep. Yeah. So, yeah, this car's done 126,000 miles. It looks like it came out of the showroom and it drives just like it as well. The gears are fantastic. Change gears smoothly. The engine is lovely and powerful still. Doesn't have any of the oil leaks or oil burns or things dropping off. No, it really drives as good as it did when it came out of the factory and it looks as good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through 10 things you have to do, some things you have to do once every three years, some things you have to do once a year, some things you have to do, well, more, almost every week. And if you follow the guide, you'll keep your 6 Series in perfect condition. It isn't onerous, it isn't hard a task really. I don't spend much time doing the cars these days. I spend more time doing videos on them, to be honest. But I love cars which look in great condition and drive really well. And that's what this is all about. This is 10 things you can do to keep your car in perfect condition. Oil change is very important. And I know I'm always banging on about them every five minutes but it is the main reason the N62 fails. And it isn't the distance, five, 10, 15,000 miles, it's the interval between oil changes. After about a year, the oil starts to break down and you lose the volatile components, such as the detergents, rubbicizers, plasticizers, anti-corrosion properties. And as soon as they've gone, then the stem seals will start to wear, you'll start getting oil burn and so on. So I know, sorry, I bang on about it all the time, oil changes at the very longest once a year, at the very longest once every 10,000 miles. Yep, something that you just think stays in there and stops the engine freezing up. It's got a lot more properties than that. Just like the oil, it's got detergents, it's got lubricants, rubbicizers, plasticizers, look after all your hoses, looks after your expansion tank, and most importantly, looks after your coolant transfer pipe. Yet without the anti-corrosion elements, which break down over time, then the coolant transfer pipe's going to start leaking, and that's a bear of a job. Even if you use the simple methods with the BMW stent repair, which is quite popular these days, it's still a bit of a pain in the neck for a job. So every three years, time to get that coolant out. You don't have to take it all out. Three or four litres out of the radiator via the drain tap. That's all you need to take out. Replace it with fresh blue BMW coolant and make sure it is nice blue BMW coolant and you'll be okay for another three years. Do you know how much it costs to replace the soft top on an E64? I'll tell you what, you really don't want to know. So it's imperative that every three years you recondition it. It's not much fun of a job, it takes about four days but you've got to do it. You've got to do the cleaning. You've got to do the recolouring. You've got to do the weatherproofing. Four days later, it's going to look as good as new and it's going to last another three years. What happens if you don't look after it? Well, it shrinks and it cracks. 
when it shrinks, the soft top won't go back up again. You get it down, have a nice drive in the sunshine, go to put it up again, and it just won't go. You get halfway to being up and it will stop. And then you'll be in a bit of a pickle. So yeah, once every three years, soft top, recondition it. Battery. Yep, BMWs really hate batteries with bad condition. And I'm not talking about voltage or charge, I'm talking about battery condition. And that is all down to charging it regularly. And it may be okay if you're using the car every day to go to work, that's fine, it'll stay in good condition. Use the car about once a week and slowly the condition of the battery will deteriorate. And it's intrinsic series resistance and its capacity will decrease. And when that happens, certain things don't work. And one of them being the gearbox. And then you start getting trans fail safe prog warnings on the mid and so on. So very important, the battery's kept in good condition. If you're not using it much, put a battery conditioner on it and that look after your battery. And then your battery's gonna last for a good 10 years. If you don't keep it in good, good condition, you're going to have problems and it's going to last just a couple of years. Seals. The E63 and E64 are full of them. And I'm talking about not stem seals, but all the window seals. There's so many bits of rubber in an E63 and 64. And if they break and deteriorate, it gets very expensive and then the car fills up with water. So use gummy fledge on them. It takes about three or four hours to do all of them but there again that's done for another couple of years and none of your seals are going to shrink. You're not going to fill up with water and the car's going to look good too. So yeah seals. And talking about water, a very important one is your drains, your water drains. Yep, the E63 and 64 are full of them. E64 has, uh, C E63 has sunroof drains and then it has the drains that the E64 does as well in the trunk and under the bonnet or hood. Imperative that they're cleaned out. They love blocking up because all the shut lines are so large, all sorts of things get in there. In the blossom season, I have to clear it out about once a week. Once the drains are blocked up, the water level in the compartments in the engine bay will start to rise. And at some point, it'll pop out the brake pedal. It really does, out the master cylinder linkage. And then that water will get into the carpet. And once it's in the carpet, and the carpet's really thick with three inches of foam rubber underneath it, it's nigh on impossible to get it out. The car will steam up and it will start to smell. So, very important, all your water drains. If you want your gearbox to last any length of time, then no matter what BMW says about it being lifetime filled, it isn't. Not only that, is that the mechatronic seals in the gearbox start to go brittle and they will fail. So 80,000 to 100,000 miles, imperative that the gearbox fluid and filter is changed and at the same time change the mechatronic seals. They're the seals which join the mechatronics unit through to the body of the gearbox and they direct pressure through to the clutches. When they start to leak, you lose pressure in the clutches and they won't engage properly. You get really sharp gear changes and then you damage your gearbox and then you get trans fail safe prog. So it's imperative that that mechatronic sleeve is changed well before this starts happening. And if that's done, then the gearbox is going to last forever. If you don't do it, it's going to last 80,000, 100,000 miles. You'll get harsh gear changes. That's your warning. Change the fluid and the mechatronic seal, or it will fail. And I've seen so many of these fail. Imperative. Change those three things.
Next, look after your paintwork. Very important. If you want a car to look really good, then yeah, use some decent polishes on it. And I've used two polishes on this ever since I got the car and on my E31. And they look absolutely brand new from the outside. First of all, I use Zano 2 and I've got no affiliation with the company at all. Um, I've just been using it for a good 15 years or so. Simple to use, well apart from getting it off, you put it on with an applicator pad, just rub it into the paintwork. Do a bonnet at a time I think, rather than try and do the whole car so you get worn out. Leave it a good quarter of an hour, maybe half an hour, and then just use a standard microfiber cloth to get it back off again. And for that you're going to need a glove uh, because it sticks to the car quite well, Zano 2 does, and it takes quite a bit of rubbing and it makes it so much easier if you've got a glove on. Okay, I do that about once every two or three months, do the whole car. And Zano 2 is as hard as nails. It really is tough stuff. It's tougher than the clear coat. And that'll protect the car from all sorts of dusts and the rain and so on. But also it protects it from the sun because it's UV resistant. So yeah, Zano 2 show car polish, that's the stuff I use every two or three months and I'll do the whole car. In between polishes, I use Zano 8 and it's brilliant stuff. And all you have to do is squirt it on, a couple of squirts, rub it over like this, and that's it. And it's fantastic for getting rid of watermark. I can see a watermark over there. When I get him, there he is. Just give him a quick rub over, and that's it. The watermark's gone, and it just brings back the shine. And that's what the plan is with uh, Zeno 8. It brings back the, the shine which came from the Zeno 2. Uh, that's what it's designed for, but it's fantastic for getting rid of water spots and so on. Any marks in the paint, just put Zeno 8. Leaves a tough cover on the paintwork. UV resistant, fantastic. And you just get this brilliant shine and it looks just like it's brand new again. Fantastic stuff. So yeah, look after your paintwork. Not hard. Say no to, say no eight, no affiliation. And that'll do the job. And don't forget your alloys, yeah. You clean them a couple of times a week and they stay looking absolutely brand new. They really do. These are 14 years old absolutely not a mark on them they look absolutely perfect and all you need is a bucket of hot water with car shampoo in it i usually use the triple wax stuff from the garage and yeah microfiber cloth because they float rather than going to the bottom and picking up the grit and a brush which floats and it really just takes two minutes to do each one And use the brush around the lug nuts or wheel bolts in this case of course on BMWs and then water from the water butt so it doesn't have any hardness in it and that's it move on to the next one and just doing that a couple of times a week keeps them looking absolutely brand new and don't forget never use a pressure washer it just causes trouble very important, get rid of those blooming run flats that come with the tyre. Their bridge tone potenzas are awful things. And I didn't realise how bad they were until I had all four tyres changed to Falcon FK 510s. Same as I use on the E31, it just transformed the car. First thing it did is increase the acceleration from 5.5 to just under five seconds. Yet yeah, they stick to the road pretty good, but there's just so many other benefits. It really does feel like another car when you're driving it. It doesn't tram line. You don't get that sort of trammeling effect when you reach 60 miles an hour, which you get from run flats. Because of all the sort of internal plastic work and stuff, they just swing around a bit. And the grip is just fantastic. Wet or dry makes such a difference. The car feels planted instead of that sort of slight wandering feel you get from the run flats. 
600 quid I paid for all four tyres. It's hardly anything when you consider the worth of the car. 600 quid fitted on the drive, fantastic. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. It's transformed the car into something so much faster, so much better placed on the road. So yeah, get rid of your run flats. They're awful things. And finally, the last thing, leather. Look after your leather. Now on sunny days like this, well, the sun's going down now, with the top down, I love the leather in these cars. It's in perfect condition. There's no marks or scratches or anything on it. And the best way to keep it like that is to keep it supple. So I don't need to recolour it or anything like that. And I'd hate a job that's going to take hours and hours. So all I do is use yellow bees beeswax on the seats. All it's got in it is beeswax, canuba wax, pharmaceutical grade mineral oil, and that's it. And that's enough to keep the leather supple. So all you do is you have two cloths, yellow one to put it on, green one to take it off so you can remember. And just wipe it onto the onto the leather. Get it in everywhere. Leave it 10 minutes or so and then just rub it back off again. And that's it. So what you can do is you can just whiz around the whole seat, putting it on, immediately rub it back off again, move on to the next one back seats and all the exposed leather as well. This car's got a lot of exposed leather that we need to keep supple. If you keep it supple, it tends to resist damage a lot better. Um, so any sort of sharp objects on it, it tends to bend out of the way rather than crack and split. So really good to keep it nice and supple and beeswax is absolutely perfect for that. It doesn't remain sticky. You can't feel it at all once you've put it on and wiped it back off again but it's doing all the work, keeping it nice and soft. There we go, there's 10 or 11 things, I can't remember how far I got to honestly, things you have to do to the car to make it last a long time and to look like it just came out of the factory. And I really do love looking after a car so it does look like it's brand new and dries brand new. And I know it sounds onerous when you sort of compress it all into one video, but some things are done every three years, some things are only done every five years, like the gearbox fluid filter and the mechatronic seal. I've done it once and I probably won't do it again for another 60,000 miles. So that's not a too big a task. Engine oil and filter, that's number one important to do every single year. That will look after your seals. And I've also started putting Wynn's leak stopper in with the service. Uh, so when I fill it up with oil, I put the winds in it as well. That will help look after the, some of the seals, help look after the stem seals and things like that. And generally will stop you leaking oil everywhere. So I'm afraid the V8s do leak a bit of oil. No matter what you do to them, you can replace the valve cover gaskets and a few other bits and bobs. And uh, six months later, something else will be leaking. That comes with the territory, I'm afraid, with the V8. And I can't say I've ever seen an N62 with, without some sort of small oil leak. Fortunately, though, although I do leak a bit of oil, it's very low level, so I don't have to worry about it. It doesn't get on the drive or anything. Okay, so yeah, some things every three years, like the coolant. Um, important that's changed. That will look after your coolant transfer pipe. And of course, it's got to be blue BMW coolant. It's important saying, of course, if you just picked up a car from a forecourt and you brought it home, what you need to do really is change the coolant and the, well, check it if it's blue. If it's not blue, then you've got to change the coolant to make sure it's got the anti-corrosion elements in it. And also do an oil change and make sure you either do it yourself and then use the, the right oils in it. I'll put a link up for her doing an oil change. Yeah, make sure you put the right oil in it, change the filter, put some weak, a wind's leak stop in it, and then you've got a good chance of carrying on a lot longer. As I say, if you just bought it off a forecourt, get the gearbox oil filter and the mechatronic seal changed as well, and that's gonna last you another five, six, seven, eight years or so. So, yep, look after your leather, look after your paintwork. I mean, that's the most labor intensive part. A bit you have to do it quite often is the exterior of the car. As I say, I use Zeno stuff and of course I polish it once every couple of months and probably about twice a week I use Zeno 8 and it's perfect for situations like we had over the weekend where it was all polished and shiny 
on Saturday, rained overnight, and Sunday, which is today, it was all spotty. So just get out of the Zane 08, wipe it over, and it's all nice and shiny again. Anyway, well, thanks very much for the comments, and I do read all of them, so please keep them coming. If you've got any suggestions for any further videos on the 6 Series or on the 8 Series, let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, put the thumbs up on it and keep subscribing. Keep the comments coming. I really do love them. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.